welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. I am Eve with the baby's booty and I'm unmuted. <laughs> so I know you can hear me this time, uh, but I want to take a moment and thank you for joining me on our show this evening. This evening, what we're going to do is discuss how do I get started? And the reason why, not how do I get started, but how do you get started? <laughs> And the reason why this particular topic came up is someone reached out to me today, actually, um, and asked about getting started in doing rhinestones and what all she needed. And a lot of times there are folks like you guys in here, you may already be in two or three of the things, but you might be interested in getting into this other thing. So I thought it would be an okay topic to discuss on getting started in the different avenues or the different areas that we um, talk about a lot on this channel. So if you're into embroidery and you're looking at getting into sublimation, what do you need? If you're into sublimation, thinking about embroidery, what machines should you go with? And so these are topics that we'll go over tonight. And of course, for those of you who are already in one or the other, you can weigh in on the list of supplies or some things you may want to keep in mind or what you may need to know for whichever one it is that you want to help out and weigh in on because of course this is an open discussion this channel is here for you all right so i'm no one person answer everything you know i do a lot but i also appreciate the experience of others so this is a way in channel so keep that in mind you're free to ask questions in the chat um just keep it respectful and we'll go from there but meanwhile here at the baby's booty we do have groups that you can join uh, we have our Facebook group that you can uh, log in on over on Facebook. It's called the Hoop Group, and you should see me with McQuackens there. You can join in. It's free, and it's fun. You can ask questions there and show off some of the projects you've been working on, and we love feedback and back and forth uh, of the different projects and inspiration that you guys have. Also, here on YouTube, we offer memberships where you can uh, support the channel a little financially. We have three different tiers that you can join in. You don't have to do the highest. There's tiers available. So you're welcome to join there as well. And they have perks like the awesome uh, emojis that are in here. So for those of you who are who group members here, you can put your purple bell emoji so that you can show off your awesome emojis. And uh, you also have the option of requesting a purple bell. Now these come from overseas so sometimes it takes them a while for those bells to get in but as soon as we get them in and have them uh decked out with their day cow the cows will send them right out so i appreciate each one of you for taking the time out of your saturday or uh, sunday oh my gosh can i not get it together <laughs> i appreciate you taking the time out on your sunday evening to come and join us here on our channel so one of the things I like to do, if you're new here, one of the things I like to do is say hi to everyone that's here because without you guys being here, I wouldn't even have a channel, right? So let's go ahead and say hi. We'll take about the first 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes to say hi to everyone. Uh, so if you are interested in uh, saying hi and having a shout out, just go ahead and put your uh, howdy do in the chat box and we'll get right to you. Also, if you have questions as we go along, Feel free to drop them in the chat and I'll try and get to them as soon as possible. So let's go to the very beginning and we're going to say hey to Miss Gail Moore. Miss Gail Moore is in the house. We appreciate you being here. And Miss Gail Moore also is a YouTube Hoop Group member here uh, on our channel. So thank you very much for being a member of our Hoop Group. Let me bring my chat down so that I can see it better um, on in front of me instead of way up here. All right, and let's see, that was Ms. Gail Moore. And then next we have Embroidery Diva. Hey, Embroidery Diva, what's up, girl? <laughs> welcome, thank you for joining us. Inspiration Creations, Ms. Lori, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Monica Torres, hello, how are you? Welcome, Ms. Kathy, Ms. Tanisha from England, welcome. Phyllis from South Carolina, hey, Ms. Phyllis, how are you? Welcome, thank you for joining us. Dorothy, hello, how are you as well? Uh, we have EJ's daughter, who is a Hoop Group member as well. Thank you so much, EJ's daughter, for supporting our channel. And we appreciate you being here this evening. Chris Smith, welcome. So crafty. Hey, so crafty. 
Thank you for joining us and thank you for being a YouTube Who Group member as well. Mary Brown is here. Thank you for joining us. Carmen Alvarado, welcome from Cali. And thank you as well for being a YouTube Who Group member. I appreciate it. Nick Nick Nurse, how are you doing this evening? Thank you for joining us. Miss 143, thank you very much for being a YouTube Who Group member as well. We appreciate it. Pearl Lucas, hello. Miss Deborah Harris, Miss Dorothy Gaston. Uh, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Latanya Wade Willis for being, thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member uh, and for helping support our channel. Elizabeth is here from sunny North Florida. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Lilo Nelson is also a YouTube Hoop Group member and we appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Joanna, welcome. Good evening to you as well. EJ's daughter says hit that like button. So keep that in mind as you are in here with us. We appreciate it. Sherry, good evening to you as well. Sandy, welcome. Miss Ursula Lewis from Port Allen, Louisiana, welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, Miss Beckham, a YouTube Hoop Group member as well. Thank you so much for joining us this evening and uh, for supporting our channel. Angelia Baker says she got a cricket mini easy press. And so for those of you as well who are new to the channel, we like to celebrate the babies and those achievements that you uh are able to get when you're trying to get your business built up or if it's just because you wanted something cool in your crafting studio uh it's interesting to me how the family and other folks around you are like okay so what's the big deal you got a mini press no honey boo boo that's a big accomplishment we appreciate anything that we got going on so we're going to celebrate with you by ringing the bell so congratulations angelio baker on your easy press <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Yes, that's what's up. Uh, what you gonna be pressing, girl? Let me know. You get some vinyl, you get some bling. What you gonna do? <laughs> uh, let's see. Sheila Cushionberry. Hi, Sheila Cushionberry. He got a she got another baby. She said she finally got her Burnett B70 Deco 6x10 embroidery machine. And don't remember if I mentioned I got a new 15 in one key press too. It's all right, we're gonna celebrate all of it. So congratulations on your new baby. <laughs> yes, that's what's up, Holly. We got some new babies in the house to go with all the other babies that we've been bringing in lately. It's awesome to see everyone and their expansions. It's really cool. Hello, hello, Heather from Hollywood, Florida. Welcome, Sunshine. Yes, you are new here. I haven't seen your name before, so welcome. Thank you for joining us and being uh, present with us this evening. Allison Holloway, welcome to you as well. Thank you for joining us. Let's see who else we got. Stampin' Sue Creates from Pennsylvania, welcome. Thank you, always a pleasure to have you here. Katrina, hello, welcome. Always a pleasure for you as well. Thank you for joining us. Ms. Ethel Smith is a regular as well and a YouTube Hoop Group member. So we really appreciate your support of our channel and thank you for joining us this evening. Hey, Renee Boyd, how are you? Welcome back. Thank you for joining us. Gail from Tucson, Arizona. Alva Nett from Smithville, Virginia. Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Plotting Stitch. I love it. From Niagara Falls, which package did you get for the DTF printer? Um, I'll have to look it up. Let me see real quick if I can find that. Because um, if I'm not mistaken, it was like the first one that was on his website. And it was without the software because I did get the software separate. So let's take a look-see at which one did I get. It's the 1800, but um, I did the, pretty sure, no, it wasn't that one. Or was it? If I'm not mistaken, the one that I got was, Oh gosh, he said it's sold out for everything. That's crazy. That's crazy. So, printer only. Nope, I got all package. So it was number one, bundle number one, because that one says no software. Uh, but it did come with supplies, so that's the one that I did get. The bundle number one. Uh, which was the L1800 printer plus uh, it came with all of the inks. So the blue, the red, the yellow, 
black and the two bottles of white and the bleeding solution, a bag of powder, some film to play around with, and the little Q-tip thingies, um, Q-tip pads. So that's the package that I got from Kingdom DPF. And he's getting some new printers in, um, some new inks in too. So keep that in mind as well. Um, but he was really awesome. He had a way you could, uh, on his main page, you could text him and everything, you know, to check on stuff and see how to contact him. And I think for me, that was the clincher that made me like, okay, you know what? I'm going to go with this particular person because there are several folks who do sell um, direct to film printers. Um, and keep in mind, some of the people who sell direct to film printers, they don't necessarily have them on hand. They have to order them from overseas and have them shipped here. And that can take, you know, a few weeks. So, you know, check and see who has stuff in stock, you know, if you're impatient like I was. And uh, this particular Kingdom DTF, his customer service was, I mean, it took him a while, but I automatically assumed that he would be overwhelmed because DTF is starting to snowball. It's starting to really pick up and become a hot thing now. And uh, so I kind of figured he would, you know, be pressed and have folks beating his door down. So I didn't put too too much pressure on him. I just wanted to be sure because everybody else that I had called was like, okay, we have the printer, but it's going to take a couple of weeks for you to get it. And I'm like, okay, but do you have the printer? He said, you pay for it the next day. I'm going to have it shipped to you. So I'm like that, you know, but I wanted to be sure. Other than that, I didn't really bother him. Um, but I'm very pleased with the printer. Um, I did do a... Has it been 10 days? It's actually a little bit longer, I think, than 10 days review. And I put it up on the channel. So I put it up this morning, actually, but made it public this afternoon. So if you want to check that out and see what my thoughts are on it. But other than that, that's where I got it was the package number one. Latanya Way Willis, welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. And thank you for being a YouTube group member. I appreciate it. Hey, Erica from Louisiana, welcome. Simone Langley, welcome. Thank you for being a YouTube Hoot group member. I appreciate it and thank you for joining us. Sandra Lemons from Columbia, newbie to embroidery, just got my PE800. That's an accomplishment. Congratulations. <laughs> yes, congratulations. PE800, your five by seven girl. Get it all. We are going to. Um, next week, I do believe we'll have us a project with our 5x7 here. Um, pretty sure we're going to be able to get it done, and I'm excited about that because I want to definitely beef up some of the embroidery videos, but there's some stuff in the works on that too, and we'll get to that later. Laura E., hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Miss Kate from Australia, welcome from Australia. Thank you for joining us this evening. Mary Stovall, thank you, thank you for joining us and mentioning that you have a five and one heat press. Congratulations to you! Woo! Five and one, five and one, yes! <laughs> Congratulations and thank you very, very much for being a YouTube Hoop Group member as well. I appreciate it. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Zaronda, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Hopefully, you're doing okay. We appreciate you being here. Um. 2011 Miss Max. Hello, you got a new baby of 15 needle SWF. Congratulations! <laughs> yes, congratulations. That is awesome sauce. That 15 needle is her thing, and SWF is a very good machine. So, congratulations on your SWF and your she shed at that. So, you have fun out there for me. Ben for real from New York. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Marianne, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, oh, <laughs> no, I took the glasses off tonight. I, was, I said it, it. I had a lot going on, so we, we took the glasses off. <laughs> I was, I'm tired, so I didn't feel like fighting uh, with that. But now I got to fight with my reading glasses if I have to read anything. So that's crazy to me that I'm that old now. Embroidery Diva says, congratulations to everyone. And that's what's up. Sonya Siegler, welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Gail McNair says, I got a Cricut mug press and I turned an Epson printer EP3710 into a sublimation printer. And OMG, it works great. Love it. 
Congratulations, Gail. That what's up? <laughs> Guys, mug press, mug press. <laughs> that mug press is fun, ain't it? It's really cool. Um, being able to easily make mugs. I mean, even the, the industrial mug press, you can make mugs with that as well. But it's just something about the cricket one. They make it cute and fun looking, so it's just hilarious to me. But it does work, and uh, we enjoy it as well. Latasha Jackson, hello to you as well. Sondoras from Washington, D.C. Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, let's see what else we got going on. Make sure I don't have any questions I'm missing. Hey, Galena, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Glad you are here. Happy Scrappy 45. Love your name. That's really cool. <laughs> welcome. Thank you for joining us. Sondoras Mouse, I want to start blinging. Blinging is awesome. Um, so we'll definitely go over that here in a moment. Galena White says Dytrans doesn't process weekend orders until Monday. That is correct. They are, I want to say it's more like a family business. Um, it's not completely, I mean, they have other folks working there too, but they don't do anything over the weekend. It's all when they come in on Monday. So yeah, if it's not done by a certain time on Friday, then yeah, it will be Monday before it's processed and sent out. I want to say 3 p.m. on Friday, but I will call them and verify the last time, you know, the latest that you can call or uh, go online and place an order for it to ship out on Friday. Um, Let's see. Treasure Design say, good evening, all. My red line mini has left the station and is on its way home. Congratulations, girl. That's what's up. Please let us know when that baby hits home so that we can ring the bell <laughs> and celebrate with you. Lisa Brackenridge, hello, how are you? Um, thank you for joining us this evening. Let's see, let's see, look at all the emojis. Absolutely love it. Uh, happy Scrappy 45, I got my new baby lock flourish too. Congratulations on your embroidery machine. <laughs> yes, congratulations. <laughs> That's what's up. Embroidery in the house is dominating. Uh, Ms. Bickham says, I love SWF as well. I know, ma'am, because <laughs> you have one. Uh, Laura E says, I received my baby cricket maker. Congratulations. <laughs> yes, I thought about doing the cricket maker, but then I was like, you know what? I got enough cutting machines around here. I don't need any more. So I didn't get one. Um, let's see who we have. Lisa Brackenridge. Oh, my gosh. Another baby. Oh, man. Epson 1430 for sublimation, the 13 by 19. Awesome, so yay! Congratulations, Lisa. <laughs> 13 by 19 is a lot of fun. You can get some pretty big prints out of that. And also t-shirts, like the bigger size shirts, love 13 by 19. I'm actually looking forward to doing some 13 by 19 on this DTF. So I'm excited about that. I do have, um, I ordered some 13 by 19 paper, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, so Doris also says, got a Cricut Maker and an Easy Press 12 by 12. Hello! Yes, congratulations. And then Carmen Alvarado says that her husband bought me a Janome cover stitch sewing machine. It was on my wish list. It's like a serger, but different. That is correct. It makes your garment look professional, easy to work on, stretchy material, and elastic. Congratulations, girl. Them cover stitch machines is nice. <laughs> yes, that's what's up. Miss Beckham says she want to come in and play in some of the studios. I know, right? They have some really cool toys. Simone Warren, good evening to you as well. And thank you so very much for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. It looked like I went over a little bit in the time that I thought I was going to to say hi to everyone. Uh, Kingsbury's Crafts, welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Let's see, Gorgeous Rose, hello. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us as well this evening. Uh, Sandora says, been watching the Bling Tees video, so we're going to get into that. Treasure Design says, thank you, husband, and I are excited. Yes, all the bell ringing. I absolutely love it. Congratulations again to everyone who has new babies in the house. It is totally fun to get something new and play with it. Unless you got other stuff going on that takes you away from being able to play with your babies, but we're not going to get into that right now, are we? <laughs> It's been a lot going on around here. So at any rate, let's go ahead and get into the discussion for those who are here for not the uh, pleasantries. They're here for the actual video. 
Um, so when you're looking to get started in the different crafts, there's a lot of things that you want to keep in mind. There's pros and cons to all of them. Uh, but the most important thing is trying to figure out where to start with the shopping list. And of course, most people are like, okay, well, the equipment, of course, is first and foremost. And to a certain degree, that would be correct. But where do you begin with the equipment, right? So I'm going to start with where we actually started. Um, we got started with, um, oh, you're welcome, Sadora. We actually got started with embroidery, okay? Now, I've told my story numerous amounts of times, but I got started with a 4x4 embroidery machine. So to let you guys know who may have a 4x4 embroidery machine and feel like that's not enough, I want to let you know that it definitely is. That's how I started my business. Um, and I was mainly embroidering more for fun per se than business, but that four by four, I, I initially felt so limited by it because I didn't uh, at first think that there was too much that I could do, but I started out with the smaller side of things. So like you could do handkerchiefs, um, especially for weddings. Oh my gosh, handkerchiefs for weddings. You can make some pretty decent money doing those. Um, there are also a lot of in the hoop projects that you could do, like for instance, um, hand sanitizer holders, things like that, keychains uh, or key fob things that you can make. Um, you also have onesies. Onesies are the perfect size for a four by four embroidery machine. Then you also have, um, you know, just little things like a baby lovey, uh, which is like the little blankie that babies would have to play with or whatever you could put their name customize that put a um, monogram on it and then let's not forget a lot of times the left chest logo is smaller than four by four in a lot of instances so you could even reach out to those who may have a shorter business name or just a logo and do the left chest on um, the four by four embroidery machine very easily so keeping that in mind you want to definitely get yes, look into the embroidery machine um, but if you can only afford about $500, then definitely look 4x4 four four and get started in it um, because you can use that 4x4 four four to create the income revenue that you need to build up to buying something bigger. Okay, bigger is not always better. I'm going to let you know that right off top. So if you are on the smaller scale, the smaller side of things, and you have the small home embroidery machine, whether that's the four by four or the five by seven, you definitely want to keep in mind that you want to look into getting thread. All right. And there are several thread manufacturers out there. Um, one of the ones that tend to, uh, their prices are great and the thread is great. I use Metro EMB. Um, and I'll put that in the chat and I need to put it in the description as well. But Metro EMB, they are so affordable. They even have the stabilizer. And you can get your thread, your stabilizer, some bobbins, all of that jazz on their website. And you can get the smaller spools and they're very super affordable. Um, because if you go to Joann's, um, I think Joann's is about the only craft store that carries embroidery thread. Walmart has some, some smaller spools. Um, but because the Walmart carries Coats and Clarks. But if you go to Joann's, a lot of times the um thread there is kind of pricey unless you get it on sale so keep in mind sometimes online is the better option also on um amazon there's several uh embroidex i believe is one several thread manufacturers on there i think somebody starts with an eight it was on the tip of my tongue i've bought some of their thread as well and it comes in a cute little dome it's got the plastic dome on top it starts with an eight i can't remember the name so if somebody remembers the name, just pop it in the chat for me. Um, hey, G 3GN Print, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Andrea, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, Allison says, I keep trying, but just can't seem to get my business going, but I'm having fun in the meantime. Honestly, I would suggest having fun first. Hobby Lobby, that's right. Hobby Lobby does have embroidery today. Thank you, Gail McNair. That is absolutely correct. Um. Latasha just installed Mr. Cool. I know that's right. Yes, because it's hard to handle the damn um, thread art on Amazon. But if there's one that starts with an H, and I probably need to log online and look and see what it is, because I thought it was just the cutest thing, and then I could show you what it is. Um, no, Hobby Lobby does carry the thread, but I was talking about um, the 
thread, the name of the thread on Amazon that I found that time. And I bought a black one um, for black school. Hemingsworth. Thank you, Allison. I know it started with an H. Um, it's just really messy. Or thread. No, I spelled it wrong. Or is it Hemsworth? They're saying Hemsworth. Um, let's see if I could find one. Because I thought that dome on there was like super cute. I was like, oh my god, it's got its own little package and everything. Um, Kind of like the Beauty of the Beast bros in that dome, the glass dome. That's what their thread comes in. Let's take that. Let's see. Nope, that was, oh, oh, oh. Who is that? Chris Hemsworth. Why did I type that in? I didn't need to see him shirtless on his shirt. So let's just get off of that. Um, more, <laughs> let's hurry up and get off of that. Thread. No? Yes, here it is. Hemingworth. It's Hemingworth thread. Let me get my screen switched over so that y'all can see this little cute little thing of thread. Is this it? Nope. That one. Boom. So, isn't that the cutest thing? It comes in a little too flotchy. And I think, so, what this does, which I think is, like, really cool, you leave the clear dome on there, but this plastic uh, plug at the top, you take it off, and that keeps you from having to use, like, a net um, on your machine, you know, so like the floral net that goes on the flowers, they have that, and that helps keep the thread from flailing all over the place and unraveling crazy off of the spool. So I thought that was pretty cool, but I've bought this brand of thread before uh, because they have quite a few colors. It's pricey though. As you see, it's six bucks for spool, and this is a small spool. This isn't like a huge spool, but it's really cool that it comes in the little dome package. So at any rate, Keeping that in mind, we do have a link in the description below for, I don't have a link for this brand of thread, but I do have a link for embroidery supplies. Because the thing is, once you start getting into um, buying things for the things that we do, like embroidery, sublimation, whatnot, that list can get quite long, especially if you don't know what the best option is to purchase, right? So. What we tend to do is I'm going to narrow it down as much as possible to help streamline this, okay? So get your basic colors, all right, um, and your embroidery thread. Then you definitely want to have um, your needles on standby. So all of that is in the Amazon list in the description because I do have a list of supplies. Um, I just don't have a list for the DTF supplies yet. Uh, but there is lists, and they're listed by sublimation, crafty finds, things like that. Um, but once you get your um, thread and you get your needles, you definitely want to have, you know, if your embroidery machine takes drives, get your little flash drive. Um, and because of the sheer volume, so if you're just getting into embroidery, I'm warning you right now. This is a very strong warning because I'm here to tell you I need to go to Embroidery Designs AA or something of the equivalent because you will wind up with so many designs until you will just not be able to understand why and how you have so many embroidery designs. Um, so, And that goes for embroidery fonts as well. So keep in mind you want to have something to back that stuff up to. So a hard drive, an external hard drive, a cloud-based backup system, one or two or both. Honestly, I do both because the day, the day your computer crashes and you lose all of those embroidery designs that you had on your computer is a sad day. I'm here to tell you. So definitely have something to back this stuff up to. But going back to the actual embroidery stuff, then you want to uh, have your stabilizers which you can get from Metro EMB as well. Um, keep your different types of stabilizers. You definitely want to have a form of cutaway embroidery stabilizer. I find a lot of new folks are told to get tearaway and that tearaway is all you need and that's not the case. In more instances than not, 
you will use cutaway because more people get into doing embroidery because they want to embroider garments. And if you're going to be embroidering clothing, you really need to be using cutaway. Industry standard. Uh, so keep that in mind when you are looking for your uh, stabilizers. Do you have to get black stabilizer? No, you don't. But it's more a form of aesthetic to help with, especially like a white garment. You put the black underneath and it makes it harder to see the stabilizer under it. But if you're not really embroidering much on white garments, then black shouldn't be a concern as much. Uh, what is the brand of invisible sewing thread that you use? I, the, the invisible thread that I have doesn't have a brand name to it because I bought it from a local thread company that is now out of business. They went out of business back in February. And it's like a big, huge jumbo spool. And I have no idea where it is right now because I'm having to rearrange the studio. But it's like this jumbo, super industrial size spool of clear thread. But I rarely, rarely use it. So, I mean, any monofilament um, thread should be okay. But the invisible, about the only thing I would use the invisible thread with is. Um, like doing towels, the uh, knockout, not knockout stitch. That's not, well, some people call it knockout stitch, tile drop, or that stitch so totally that you don't have to match it on the towel. That would be about the only reason I would use that. But otherwise, um, I used it for sewing more than I did for embroidery back when I did a lot of sewing. Um, but I don't know that I've said really anything about it but Allison makes a good point I'm gonna go back to that because I'm not sure that I touched on it like I wanted to but she was saying she, she's having fun in the meantime and trying to get her business started so for those of you who are trying to get the business started uh, I would definitely suggest have fun in the meantime why would I say that well um, one of the things that I notice a lot of the new people do when they get started in doing either embroidery or vinyl or sublimation or any of that, one of the first things they want to do is start a business with it and start taking orders. But what happens is, and, and I've seen several posts about it. Matter of fact, I saw one recently in a sublimation group. I think it was sublimation. I know it was one of those groups. And the lady was doing a craft. It wasn't embroidery. So it was either sublimation or uh, vinyl. I'm pretty sure it was sublimation. But at any rate, she was making shirts. And the shirts that she made were not sellable quality, in my opinion. Um, for instance, a lot of the wording was spaced crazy. It had crazy spaces in between the letters. Like, for instance, you get a cricket, like someone got a cricket machine and decided they wanted to start doing a business and doing shirts. And you know how cricket is when you type in letters, they're not evenly spaced. I don't know why cricket ain't got that fixed yet. I don't know why it does that, but it doesn't space them evenly. So you can have a bigger gap between this letter and not so on the other letters. And so you really need to go in and space the letters properly um, prior to cutting them out so that it look good, right? Well, not everybody knows to do that. So her stuff was face crazy. It was all center, you know, and, and she was like really upset because she couldn't figure out why the person she did the shirts for wanted their money back. And she was like, this, this isn't, I already did everything and I paid for everything. Why do they want their money back? You need to practice. Please practice people. Please, please practice. Practice first before you start selling stuff. What I did was I just made stuff for people, for friends. It was like, okay, well, you know, here's some onesies for your baby. Congratulations on the baby. You know, it's kind of hard to be like, Ugh, I don't want this anymore when somebody made it out of the kindness of their heart. You know, some people are cold and will say something. But for the most part, people are like, oh, thank you. I appreciate it. And it could look horrible, but, or maybe not look the best, but they'll be okay with it. You know, and it's not that big of a deal, but that gives you room to practice and grow. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you something else that I just did. So I just got my DTF, right? Y'all know it. And I think I showed this to you guys. I'm not sure. But, like, I was making things for my daughter. She asked for a shirt with an image, and I did it. You know, and it's a, like, Naruto shirt, right? It turned out pretty great. You know, I think it could have been better because the white 
are not true white. And with DTF, you can use the glue that goes on the back of the um, transfer. You can use white, white powder or black powder. Well, the black powder helps block the color of the shirt so that if you're using white, the white will be more of a true white. Well, I didn't know that at the time. So that is one thing I learned. But the other thing is I have to pay attention to, you know, the extra stuff that's on it. It's easy for me to do that with vinyl. But I didn't think to look for that on the transfer for this shirt. And if I had have done the black powder, that would have shown up better for me. And I would have saw it and been like, oh, I can't put that on her shirt. And it would have turned out better. But at any rate, we learn. This is a learning process. And I made this for my daughter. I'm not trying to sell this, right? So, you know, practice. Practice makes perfect. It's okay to make mistakes, especially when you're practicing. There's nothing more frustrating than to be in, like, for instance, the order that I was working on on Friday that should have been out, but because of stuff I had going on, I couldn't get to the order faster than I wanted to. So I wanted to get that order out on Friday, and I'm struggling to learn DTF and get it just so for my customer. Last second, you don't need to be under that kind of pressure when you're learning, okay? Don't do that to yourself like I just did, okay, learning lesson, which I should have known, but I've done it before and fussed it myself before. I'm fussing it myself again. I won't be doing that anymore. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. Practice. Get your practice in. Get your feet wet. You know, make a couple of projects here and there. Then make some more projects here and there. And then jump into, hey, I'm getting pretty good at doing this. Then jump into you know, selling whatever it is. Like if you're, you've are you gotten pretty good at doing towels, start with towels and then jump into some of the other stuff. So anyway, kind of a soapbox moment, but it's really important because a lot of times people think just because you have the equipment and just because you know a handful of things about it that you can make money off of it. No, get down pat with it first, okay? Let it let it do what it's supposed to do and, and stop selling yourself short. Um, so at any rate, going back to embroidery, you have your needles, you have your thread, you have your machine, um, especially with the small home machines, you have your machine, you can get repositional hoops, which are listed in the description with the, uh, oh, sorry, in the Amazon storefront. And those take your four by four hoops and make it where you can embroider bigger than four by four. Um, and it also takes your five by seven hoops and make it where you can embroider bigger than five by seven. Those are options. You don't have to have that, but they are options that you can use uh, so that you can expand a little bit bigger than your current horizon, right? Um, beyond that, weigh in, you guys, on what else needs to come with the embroidery process. Uh, oh, and other Let me know what else I'm missing uh, because you guys have been embroidering for quite some time, especially those who have the home machines. Industrial machines, there's a whole lot more you want to prepare for. You need bigger spools of thread, which you can get that from Metro EMB as well. Bigger rolls of stabilizer because the hoops are bigger with those bigger machines. Um, you also will need industrial needles because the regular home needles, they can go to Walmart and buy their needles. We can't do that. We have to get our needles from Amazon or someplace like that to get them in. Um, you can't just walk in the store and buy industrial needles. Um, let's see, we also need, what else? Gosh, you, most of us with the industrial machines have a hat hoop, so we need to make sure we have the hat stabilizer, um, if you choose to stabilize your hat. Uh, let me know what else I'm missing, because I'm trying to, uh, make sure I'm not forgetting anything, and I know I will. Um, different stabilizers are key, Chris Smith says, so, yes. Oh, I see somebody got a baby. Hold on. Evie Sewing, welcome. Thank you for joining us from Canada. Hey, Evie. Yeah, nice name. Uh, Willie Roseman, been waiting on a 20 ounce tumbler press for two months and finally got it. Not that tumbler press, girl. Congratulations. <laughs> yes, 20 ounce. 20 ounce. Yes, congratulations. Y'all, how am I going to ring the bell with a magnet stuck in the thing? What in the world? No wonder it was sounding crazy. <laughs> Congratulations. Let me move this darn magnet. I can't even remember what that's for. Uh, 
Um, let's see. Kimmy's work thread has a cute cap to keep out dust. Yes, I'm sure that keeps out dust as well. So yes, definitely. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, Latasha says, what brand? Okay, I right, answered that as much as I could. Heather, welcome. Thank you for joining us. I'll be right with you at Embroidery AA. I know that's right, because the amount of embroidery designs that I have is ridiculous. Literally ridiculous. I've, I haven't sewn all of those. Why do I keep buying embroidery designs? And I have not sewn the ones that I have already. It's crazy. I'm I'm obsessed. Tamika Favors. Hey, darling. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, Laverne, two jump drives and they're full already. I understand. Uh, Latanya, you're welcome about the black stabilizer. Yes, I do use it, especially for uh, black. Um, I also use it for black polo shirts and stuff like that for those customers. It makes it less noticeable, um, which I found a lot of the customers like that. Designs Anonymous. Right. March Campbell, hello. Just seems right. Linda Woods Brown. Hey, darling, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. I appreciate you being here. Knockdown Stitch, thank you. Thank you. How to save embroidery files to back up. Okay, so when you're trying to save your embroidery files, um, let's see if I can uh, point this out in a way. That'd be kind of crazy. So. To be completely honest about the best way to handle that, let me get this open. I'm opening. I just got these off of Amazon because I got tired of misplacing, um, not only misplacing flash drives themselves, but I could never remember what design was on what flash drive. So I figured if I had colors, it would help me determine okay, this is a business for this particular company, that's for that particular, and help me keep them organized if that's the case it works. Not sure that it will. Um, but I'm going to switch you over to my computer. So here's my computer, and I'm going to plug in this drive. So what's going to happen, as soon as I plug in that flash drive, it should pop up this drive, and it says that it is empty, which we already knew it would be because I just bought it. So where I keep a lot of my embroidery files is on my, I have two hard drives in this computer, so on my D drive. And then I have a folder with the picture of an embroidery machine for my embroidery files. And here they are. So I'm going to let you know ahead of time, I don't want to use up the memory on, on my computer trying to select all of these to show you how big this actual folder is, but it's ridiculously big. And it's way bigger than the eight gigabyte size on this drive. So make sure that whatever drive it is that you choose to um, use to back up your stuff is bigger than the size of your folder. But all I basically would do is on my left side of the screen, you'll see all of my folders. Well, this E drive is my new hard drive that I just put in because when it popped up it said it was the E drive and I would select all of my folders you can hold down one of the first ones and come down to another one hold down the shift key and it will select them all all right so if I were to select just these and click on properties it'll tell me just how big all of these files that I just selected are and look I'm already at two gigabytes going quickly to three gigabytes i don't even know how much look and remember my little flash drive is eight gig and it's still counting so you definitely want to check by doing that by selecting the folders that you want to back up to see just how big a hard drive you're going to need and if you select way more than this and it you see it's taking its time counting this stuff up mainly because i got a camera system running in the background so it's going to take it a little bit longer but look, I'm already coming up on 7 gigs. So these folders will not fit on this flash drive. So you, look, 16 gigs is in all of the folders that I just selected. Way too big. But do this to help yourself keep from aggravating yourself. Because if I hadn't have checked that and I just tried to drag this down to my little flash drive, it would have told me it's too full. So I don't went through selecting all of that for nothing, right? So let's cancel this out, and I'm just going to grab this first folder and drag it down to the E drive. 
click on it, hold it down, drag it down, and drop it. And that's pretty much it. You'll see it's backing up. And there I have a backup of that folder. I don't have to worry about if my computer crashes now. I know that this folder will be here on this flash drive for me to use. So it's the exact same way with the portable hard drives that you get. I would suggest getting the type portable drive that you don't have to have external power connected to it, that the laptop or computer itself will power it. Um, and then that way it's easier for you to take and go if you need to, you know, go to a friend's house and embroider or something like that. You never know. Um, but that's how you back up your files. And I just pretty much um, back up every bit of it. Every bit of it, especially the fonts, girl. I'm trying to tell you, back up your fonts. But your designs really should be backed up as well. So that's how you would do it when you pull in that new hard drive. Um, it'll have however many, like a terabyte or 500 gigabytes or whatever it is. As soon as you plug it in, it should pop up and tell you what drive it is um, so that you'll know where to drag and drop your files, right? So hopefully that was helpful um, to you, Miss Patty Shelton. If not, um, let me know more specific what it is that you were having issues with. Hey, Shane and Krause, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, let's see, Mary Williams, welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. I appreciate you being here. Uh, Gail McNair, I love to make samples before making it a final project. And I've always suggested that because what a lot of times will happen is a person will go to do the embroidery project. They'll embroider on the actual item that the customer is supposed to get, like, for instance, a hat. Person will embroider on the actual hat, and then when you go, it it causes hats are notorious for causing problems. And so something happens, needles break or whatever, and now the design is ruined for the customer, and you're upset. Practice first. Don't do on the actual item, especially if you're getting an item from the customer to embroider. I definitely would like to ask you to avoid doing that as much as possible. The level of stress. The, the sheer level of stress that comes upon you for embroidering on something a customer brings you is ridiculous. It's very, very stressful. Because if you, especially if you don't know how to recover, how to get stitches out and stuff like that, then I hate to tell you, it's just, it's stressful. So practice first. Practice on something else. Um, now that you brought that up, another thing that I like to tell folks to get if they're doing embroidery is the Peggy Stitch Eraser. Okay, please, please, somebody, please put that on your list of things to get if you're doing embroidery. The reason why I say that is because it is so helpful when you make a mistake. It is very, very helpful. And I have a couple of videos on using the Peggy Stitch Eraser. Um, so that folks can know how to do it. Let me switch this over. Here's one on Amazon. This one uh, has the plug to it. it. Comes with oil. It's pricey, but well worth it. Well worth it. If I haven't suggested anything else ever, ever, never, this Peggy Stitch Eraser is it. Okay, definitely Peggy Stitch Eraser. Don't forget it. You will not regret making this purchase, especially when you mess up on something that belongs to somebody else. You will not regret this purchase. I promise you that. I promise you. This thing has saved my butt I don't know how many times. So definitely check out that Peggy, Peggy Stitch Eraser. It's worth it. You need that in your embroidery studio. Uh, so if anything else you guys can think of, please point that out. And then here shortly, we'll switch away to sublimation and talk about sublimation. Let me move the chat back down so that I can see it. Um, Galena says, yeah, I thought I might get away without using the green pad on a slate photo panel and it did not work out. Those were practice slates yet. Oh, the slate photo panels for sublimation? Those are not easy to sublimate. Um, mainly because of the, cur you know, the cracks and stuff. Tamika favors DTF is direct to film. Direct to film, um, I'll grab that when we get to that part of it, but it is where you print the image on a film and then you can heat press it to the actual shirt. But DTF has 
quickly become my absolute favorite thing to go to for doing um, now shirts and stuff that I would ordinarily use vinyl for, um, especially when a customer wants black shirt. Y'all, I, I, I never understood. Sublimation came out, and sublimation is it's not similar to sublimation at all. Um, but sublimation came out, and folks were absolutely smitten with sublimation because now you can actually print a picture on some a, a live photo, and it looks just like the photo on items. But customers did not want white shirts. I that never. I don't understand. Just like folks was like, that's horrible. The worst thing you could ever suggest is suggesting a white shirt, and that thing still floors me. And I'm like, okay, but you want this picture. If you want the picture, the shirt has to be white because I'm not going to go through stress and trying to get easy weed and cutting it out and all that. Yeah, no, white shirt. You just got to deal with it. So, sublimation is awesome, but with this DTF, the direct to film, you don't have to worry about that anymore, which I absolutely love it. Dorothy Brucker, I would make things and give it away for practice. Yes, 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 yes. Um, and EJ's daughter said gave away stuff to the book club. I know that's right. Find folks that appreciate a gift and then you can give it to that. Um, let's see. Hey, Tanya, you're welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. American Eagle Embroidery and Graphics. Thank you as well for joining us. And thank you to the both of you for being YouTube Hoop Group members and supporting our channel. Joanna, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, software, Allison Holloway, great suggestion, great suggestion. That is definitely something else you would need to have in starting out with embroidery, especially if you're like me and can't take just what people have designed out there and and just using that to make life work. Yeah, no, you got to have your own flair and your own spin. So definitely check out software. I suggest So What Pro because it is so affordable in comparison to other embroidery software programs out there and it has a 30-day trial where you can try it out other programs do too so definitely try out the 30-day trials out there so that you can pick what fits you the best but with so what pro the price plus the fact that you can do so many things with it that you can do with the more pricey software program hands down i love so what pro that is in the soft in the link in the description below as well. So software, yes, Allison, thank you for suggesting that. Um, Madison, you're welcome. Thank you for letting me know the videos are helpful. Just seems right. Linda Woods Brown says one of the best pieces of advice I learned from you was getting items from Dollar Tree to practice with. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, oven mitts. Yes, not oven mitts. The flat pad, oven pads. Yes. Get t-shirts. They sell t-shirts at Dollar Tree. Yes. T-shirts, please. Um, hats. A lot of times I found at Dollar Tree. Yas. Towels. Yas, please. Dollar Tree, even if it's not embroidery, they're microfiber towels. You can print sublimation. Practice on those <laughs> before you sublimate anything else. Those rags are, what, three for a dollar? I think even at one point they were four for a dollar. Practice on the rags when you're trying to do sublimation. It's easy peasy, mac and cheesy. So, yes, Dollar Tree is awesome. Sheila Cushionberry, I've got business name picked, web domain, Facebook page, and email all obtained. But just need to pull the trigger and start. I'm the opposite. I research and practice myself into a standstill. Understandable, okay? Understandable. The thing is, if you've practiced, you know your craft, you know what you're doing, take the plunge. Start with one thing. Start small. Start one thing, maybe do towels. Towels are so, so easy to do. Do towels. And like today, I saw, um, I was at Tractor Supply, uh, which is like a farm feed store or whatever. And they had a kitchen towel. It wasn't so, it wasn't embroidered, but it looked like it might have been sublimation or something like that. But on the towel, it said, this heifer takes no bull. And it was a picture of a cow. And I was just like, oh my God, this is so, so cute. That's the type of stuff, little whimsical things people are into now. So try something simple like towels. See how it goes. You got it, girl. You can make it work. Chris Smith, welcome. Sample material. Yes, definitely get sample material. Um, as I mentioned, Dollar Tree is an excellent place to get that from. 
Uh, Latanya says, watch the machine, especially if it's one that will continue to sew without bobbin thread. A lot of them, I, there's few that, that don't have that sensor. Uh, it's sad if they don't, but yes, please keep an eye on your machine. And you, people will find out real quick that they need to keep an eye on their embroidery machine when they come back and the embroidery had the piece of the thing they'll fold it back up under and it's done embroidered through both layers and now you got to cut it out and you're feeling real sad. Yo, you'll learn to babysit that machine after that. Uh, three <laughs> snips. Yes, EJ's daughter. That is correct. Gail McNair says, my first mug I made for my mother on Mother's Day. She ended up keeping it and redoing it. Didn't make sure the center of the O was on her mug. Beginner error. I have a lot of stuff that I've had to keep as well. Andrea, thread charts. Yes, thread charts do work out to be quite helpful, especially if you have a customer who's very picky about their colors, which is understandable. I totally get it. Scissors for different types of projects. Yes, old clothes to practice on, especially if you're going to be doing um, applique. You really need to get you some applique scissors. That will help. Um... Let's see. Let's see. I'm behind in our chat. Label and organize stabilizers. Humidity and dryness can destroy it. I know, right? You got to find that balance. Very, very uh, tricky. Inspiration creation. So when you're going into getting a larger machine, this is a very good suggestion. If you need, if you're getting industrial, you need lots of space for that industrial machine. I knew before mine came that it would be big, but when it got here, it blew my mind how big it was. Yes, those machines are not small machines. They do take up a lot of foot space, but you can make bigger things on it. So, yes, please keep that in mind. When you make things, your creative and crafty reputation is out there. So make sure it is quality as you would expect to see in the store. That will be correct because folks will, if your stuff is good and good quality, they will spread the word for you. You won't have to do any advertising. They will advertise for you. So keep that in mind um, when you are getting into that. EJ's daughter, when you get Sew It Pro, you upload designs and can edit them? Yes, you can. That is correct. You can cut them, slice them apart, put two different designs together, add letters to it. It's a whole thing. And I have videos. On our website, on the channel, I have videos, but on our website, you can rent videos as well that so go step by step through each one of the processes and learning that software in detail. Um, just seems right. Linda Woods Brown says, I just get those. I have to color coordinate to stay organized. Oh, that's right. Uh, Laverne, I got my badge, Masters. Thank you also for introducing me to John Deere for patch material. I also bought some ready made. Patches, yas, that's going to make things very handy. And thank you for pointing that out, Ms. Laverne. There are two classes for digitizing coming up. So if you're getting into embroidery and you want to learn digitizing, introductory prices on this class, y'all, definitely check him out. John Deere has two classes, and I've posted them on Facebook, and I'm pretty sure I sent out an email invitation for them. These are not my classes, but these are uh, and taught by John Deere, and I'll actually be taking the Puff embroidery class with you, so uh, definitely check him out. Hey, Felicia For Storm, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Galena says, I don't have tons of money, so my files are mostly free ones. There is absolutely nothing at all wrong with that, um, and there are tons of free files out there that you can get, and I think embroiderydesigns.com, I think it's embroiderydesigns.com, you can get three free designs a week or something. It's either three free designs a week or three three designs a day or something like that. So definitely check them out. Tiffany Brown, I have to use a backup drive, which is one terabyte, because my PC would not handle it. I mean, there are some computers out there that have limited storage inside the computer itself, so that makes sense. So, yes, that's good to know. Um, two external hard drives that are at least one terabyte where I keep my designs. That is very uh, positive to let folks know that you need to have that space because it will take up a lot of space. Board Cura Sewing and Crafts. Hey, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Appreciate you being here. Uh, Patty Shelton, you're welcome. Mark Campbell says it's 15 by 15. He press OK for putting sublimation designs on a shirt or jacket. I like 16 by 20, but cost is a bit higher than I could do right now. I have a 9 by 12 right now, not big enough. And on this, 
we'll look at switching into suggesting things that you need to get started with sublimation and heat press being one. Marge Campbell brings out a good point or asks a good question, 15 by 15 heat press. That's pretty much all I have. That's the biggest I have. And I've made many shirts. But the thing is, if your clientele tends to have designs on the bigger side, which is understandable, um, like a lot of plus size, like 2X, 3X and above shirts, um, you may need to go with that 16 by 20. Some garden flag, you will need to do the 16 by 20. Now, there are some folks out there who um, they'll get like a board and put the item on the board and just move the board to keep from moving the transfer and the item around so that you don't mess up the print. If you're good enough to figure out how to do that, I, I tried one time and got annoyed, so I don't do that. But you can use the 15 by 15 and move the thing around to sublimate, but you run a big chance of ruining ruining the sublimation print. So that being the case, uh, 15 by 15 has worked well for me. Um, I've been looking to upgrade and I'm still looking at upgrading, but for the time being, 15 by 15 is what I have. Um, so there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and nine by 12, yes, is kind of small, but some things just keep a hold to that nine by 12 because there are going to be some things that you're going to um, sublimate like keychains and stuff like that where the nine by 12 will be sufficient. And you ain't got to plug up and heat up the whole room with the bigger heat press. Um, on the multi-needle machines, is it possible to connect an external hard drive to it to be able to have the different folders for the businesses all in one place? Ms. Beckham says, it can be. It can be. The only concern that I would have, like, for instance, with the um, red line, actually, with both machines, now that I think about it, um, it takes a while to pull that stuff up. So you're having to scroll through all of the folders uh, to find the designs and the things that you want. Now, my favorite thing to do um, has always been to connect the computer to the machine itself, like USB, the brother I can connect by USB in the new red line part that's coming. I'll be able to connect USB with that as, or wireless, actually. They'll be able to connect wirelessly. And that way you can drag and drop the one design that you need onto the machine and you don't have to worry about having to scroll through stuff. But yes, in some instances, yes, you can connect a, an, an external drive, but it would have to be USB. And then um, you would have to just scroll through all the different folders and files. That's the downside to it. Uh, like, for instance, when I pulled up my embroidery file folder, as you saw, if I had all of that on a hard drive, it would be a royal pain to scroll through all of that stuff. But if you're using just business files and not your pleasure files as well, that'll streamline that some, but it's still a lot of files if you do a lot of business. Um, Borg here says, I don't like embroidering on the items that customers bring. If you ruin it, you can't remember. That's true. There's a lot of instances where me and the Peggy Stitch Eraser had to make that miracle Hail Mary come to pass because it, I've embroidered on some expensive stuff, and I'd be darned if I have to go and buy it. So now what I do is I tell people, you know, you need to let me know where you got it from. If it's somewhere where I know I can get another, then it's not that big of a deal, you know, because I've always ran my business where if I mess it up, I'll replace it. There is a clause that you can put in contracts for people to sign that says if the machine because machines do cause damage, y'all. There's no, I mean, it just happens. Where you bird nest and stuff like that. Um, so you may have to damage something from a customer and, and there's just no getting around it. And that being the case, you may have to replace it. But you can have people sign documents saying that it's not your fault and they take a risk in letting you embroider on it. In most instances, people sign off on it and they don't care. But, you know, keep that in mind as well. It's entirely up to you. And as Ms. Bickham says, definitely get that Peggy Stitch Eraser. But Boracua says you do have to be careful using the Peggy Stitch Eraser because if you don't use it correctly, you can cut your fabric, which is absolutely correct. I do not suggest using it on towels at all. But things without pile, you do need to be careful. That's, that's, that is a very, very, very sharp pair of clippers, basically. 
they're sharper than regular clippers. And you can buy regular clippers, but they won't be as sharp as these joints. And when I tell you, it'll take care of whatever you need. If you, as long as you learn how to use it, practice on something. If I can tell you to practice on everything else, practice with the Peggy Stitch Eraser before you have to use it, you'll make it work. Like, I would go grab something from the Goodwill or something like that with embroidery on it and practice taking out those stitches because it's something worn. And it's something that the stitches have been in there for a while. And then if you practice taking that embroidery out, you don't have it down. You can you can get the stitches out that uh, you might have messed up with, which it happens. It definitely, definitely happens. Um, embroidery Diva says that Peggy Stitch Eraser is the best money I ever spent. That's right. Uh, Galena, uh, how do you present embroidery image options to customers? Um, In that instance, uh, that's a little bit different because what I found is most people, even going into sublimation, which we're going to transition to here shortly, any of our customization that we do in the in most instances, I'll say 85% of the time, and then y'all know how I am about math, but I'm pretty good on this one. 85, roughly 85% of the time, People know what they want, and they bring you what they want on their items. Very rare do they come in the shop and say, hey, I want some embroidery. What do you have? Um, in the instance of where I would have a situation where I would show the design first to the customer is a place where there's like a pop-up shop or, for instance, a flea market or um, if you have a walk-in shop, something like that, you can embroider on scrap panels of something like if you wanted to do towels for instance i would embroider a couple of different options of towels and put them up there otherwise in most instances most instances whenever there's a uh, design like i tell guy folks to go to embroiderylibrary.com a lot because they have beautiful embroidery designs and they offer free designs every month so what i would suggest with embroidery library they will not only give you the embroidery design but you can also download the image of the design so you can use those images to print out and put in a book for people to flip through if you're interested you know like and uh categorize the book like baby have a tab for baby stuff or a book for baby stuff and then a book for wedding stuff you know, like that. That would be the easiest way um, because they have a picture of the stitch out that they've done. A lot of designers have that. A lot of designers. And worst case scenario, you could, you know, like right click and get the image off of their website uh, for their design and offer it that way. But that would be my suggestion um, is have like a little catalog that folks can uh, flip through. Um, I try to do that on a website. And I started uploading the designs to, a, to my website when I first started. And y'all, that was challenging because there were so many designs that I wanted to offer people. Very time consuming. Very time consuming. But if that's the route you need to go or want to go, then you're going to have to take the time to break down a catalog for folks um, if that's the route you choose to take. Several years ago, March says 100% poly shirts were so inexpensive, lower than cotton. Now the price is crazy. And a lot of that is because of the boom with sublimation. Allison, my big problem is lack of confidence. And we're here to let you know you can do it. We all had to start somewhere. So the best thing to do is just go ahead and get started. I'm trying to tell you, you'll, you'll appreciate it. And, and it will um, give you the boost of confidence that you need. Felicia says the Peggy Stitch Eraser saved me tons of hours when custom made six large pillows and had to unstitch the double zigzag closure and add more filling. So Peggy Stitch Eraser is not just for embroidery. Thanks for hipping me to it. You're welcome. That's what's up. I never thought about using it for sewing as well. So I'm glad they were able to get you uh, squared away. Just seems right says amen to referrals. Trying to tell you, you don't have to. You don't have to shout your own name from the top of rooftops. If your work is good, they will shout for you every time. I love it. Marley, Marley, welcome. Happy Sunday to you as well. Thank you for joining us. And Harmony Ling, thank you for joining us this evening. Good to see you. Shirley Scott, you as well. 
Uh, Ms. Bickham says, Creative Fabrica has embroidery files as well. You can find free embroidery designs in several places. Stitchdelight.net has free designs of all sorts. And Creative Fabrica, I'm glad you pointed that out, Ms. Bickham, because I actually have a fans page on there where if you wanted to join on Creative Fabrica and follow my page, um, I will do, I think it's like a craft a month or something like that on Creative Fabrica. Um, I need to finish making sure everything's set up the way I wanted it to be on there. But if you subscribe to Creative Fabrica, not only will you get graphics, which Creative Fabrica is what I would highly suggest if you're wanting to get into sublimation. So yes, so Creative Fabrica for sublimation if you're trying to get into sublimation. Uh, but they have embroidery designs as well. And when you subscribe monthly to Creative Fabrica, you get any of the embroidery designs you see, you can download. So that is another way you can increase your uh, embroidery designs. If you can uh, afford that, that's okay. Pamela Bradley White, welcome. And thank you for joining us this evening. I appreciate you being a YouTube Who Group member. Thank you very much for your support. She says, hello, I got a new baby. I'll call him Bobby. It's a P.E. 600. Well, congratulations. We just got through talking about that 4x4 inverter machine. Congratulations, ma'am, on your new baby. <laughs> congratulations. That's what's up. <laughs> Be sure to post some of the uh, projects that you've been working on on your new KP. Uh, Latanya Wade Willis says, I just experienced that a few weeks ago with handkerchiefs for a 90th birthday celebration stitch removal. Uh-oh. Yeah. It can... It can be like that. <laughs> it can be like that. Hey, Shamira Customs, welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Always a pleasure. Um, I did a PowerPoint with some of each category I use, Latanya says, with her embroidery designs. Same thing for sublimation. Same thing for sublimation. You can do the exact same thing, have a catalog, and show folks a lot of the different things that you offer, that you want to offer. Uh, but again, most people will come in and say, hey, I want a graduation shirt. What designs do you have? Well, I was thinking more like this. And they'll bring in a picture every time where somebody on Etsy is selling the shirt, but they want to come to you to get it. And I'm like, bro, if you see it right there on Etsy, why aren't you ordering it off of Etsy? But a lot of times they want it changed or adjusted in some way. So keep that in mind as well, um, that you can do that. Galena, you're welcome. Um, and if you choose to do a catalog, you can. It's just, it's going to take a while. And I would suggest going on and starting it, though, um, because if that's something you definitely want to do, start it now because it's going to take time to build it. And the cool thing is if you start it now, the designs that you purchase from now on, you can just automatically drop it over in that catalog. You don't have to worry about going back and finding designs and putting it in there. That's where the time process came in. Um, hello, Forever Bless. Welcome. Heather says, so true. I was doing it for fun, and now I have orders every week, and I don't advertise at all. Exactly. Robinson Anton had the dome, Miss Phyllis. I didn't know that. So I've heard of Robinson Anton thread. I haven't purchased any before um, because, unfortunately, I got hooked into Madeira. And they don't have the dome. So once I started in with them, I, I had not had not up until Metro switched to anybody else. Uh, Forever Blessed got the cricket mug present. Absolutely love it. How much do y'all charge for mugs? Woo! <laughs> Congratulations, y'all. That mug press is her thing. Folks around here are getting it. Um, Eve, you are so right. My daughter does photography on the side and did a shoot last weekend and ended up with three other shoots just off word of mouth from that one. Sheila says, yes, that is for certain. Hey, Sean. Hey, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, Ms. Bickham, I also have a book of printed fonts. Fonts, yes. You do need a catalog for fonts because people will ask you for that. I also have a book of printed fonts and then a book with them embroidered onto felt for customers to flip through. I have the full industrial catalog of Dakota collectible designs. So that's cool to know Dakota, Dakota collectibles, you can get the catalog for it. Um, Bella Ann got an Epson printer to try my hand at sublimation. Congratulations! <laughs> Go you with your sublimation self, girl. That was up. <laughs> Um, let's see. And Michi Black asked Bella, what Epson did you purchase? So Bella, let us know what Epson you got. 
Phyllis says it's a cord is isocord. I think it's isocord. It's a good thread. I'm not familiar. Well, I have heard isocord. I never purchased from them. Um, so someone asked about how much to charge for the mugs. There's different prices, and a lot of it is going to depend upon a couple of factors. So with sublimation, getting into sublimation, well, actually getting into all of this, one of the other things you want to keep in mind is your price list. Um, because if you're going to be doing this as a business at some point, you kind of want to know what time frame you have invested in each one of your projects so that you can price accordingly. So your time is valuable. Are you going to pay yourself three bucks an hour to do a job? Or are you going to pay yourself, you know, standard, like minimum wage, seven, eight bucks an hour? So it's up to you. Figure out what hourly wage you want. Then you want to look at your materials, your costs as well. So sublimating mugs, take your price of your mugs. Okay. How is how much are you charging per how much did you pay per mug blank? So that price, you definitely don't want to go under that price. So if you pay three bucks for the mug, um I forgot. I looked at the price of the mug, the pack two pack of mugs at Michael's the other day and I saw the price and I forgot what it was. But take the price of the two pack of mugs divided in half and that's how much you pay per mug. And then once you determine that, you want to look at how long it takes to design what's going on the mug, all right? So this is where a lot of people, the, in my opinion, the confusion comes in because they want you to say you really should be charging $15 a mug because you're printing the mug and that's basic. I'm like, no, the reason why I'm saying no is because each situation is different. Each situation is different. So say, for instance, graduation mugs. Graduation time is coming up. So you get um, your own design that you get off Creative Fabrica, and it says, congratulations, graduate 2021. It's a generic design. Like I mentioned, you found it on Creative Fabrica. You got you, you know, six mugs. You print that on it, and those are what you're selling. Okay, see, that's a little bit different. I would say, you know, 10 bucks, 12 bucks a mug. You should be okay around about that because you took the time you got your you're paying for the mug you're paying for your ink you're paying for your paper you're paying for the design your monthly subscription on the design and breaking that down into fractions because of course it's just one mug out of so many but the thing is what if someone comes to you and says i like that design on that mug but on the other side of the mug i want my daughter's graduation picture her cap and gown picture Okay, well, now you're having to do some light graphic design work. Okay, so you got to get the picture from the customer. You got to shrink it down, possibly crop it, and then put it on the mug. And then they're like, okay, well, I want her name too. And now you got to find a font, put the name together, make sure it's in a place on the picture or near the picture where it looks. You see what I'm saying? So your time invested should be what reflects the price of that mug. What are you offering on that mug? What are you offering in your sublimation? Even if you're doing t-shirts, it doesn't matter. No matter what you're doing with sublimation, embroidery, vinyl, bling, any of it, you want to determine just how much involvement you have invested in that particular project. That's what you want to go off of as far as pricing. Yes, have a base price. Your base price in the discussion, 10 bucks a mug, but 10 bucks a mug, that's my design, one side. I, it's not two sided. You see what I'm saying? Find your comfort level for the price of whatever it is that you're doing, the minimum of what you would do. Definitely minimum, not less than what you pay for the item that you're decorating for them. But, you know, add a little bit to that to pay yourself and then go from there. Okay. So keep that in mind. There's no base price, one price fits all. Um, you know, and folks are interested, like I could probably sell a mug, 10 bucks a mug and folks would, you know, kind of scrunch their face up at it. But in California, you probably could sell that same mug for 20 bucks and they snatch it up and say, that's a good deal. Depends on where you live. Depends on the cost of living. Depends upon what's on the mug. All right. So you come at me with a mug with prints on it. We might have to talk a little bit higher than 10 bucks. If you're pricing it, okay, it's him cute and I'm going to get that. So it just depends upon what's on it, how much you want to charge, okay? So keep that in mind. So with sublimation, you have a couple of options. There are Echo Tank by Epson printers out there that you can convert to sublimation so that you're not paying thousands for like a Sawgrass, which is a sublimation printer. But keep in mind that if you do convert a printer, there's 
a little bit of extra legwork you got to do to make sure that the printer stays up and running and you don't have any issues with clogs and stuff like that um, with your printer. So your printer, your sublimation paper, yes, you can sublimate um, by using regular printer paper, but your best quality is going to come off of sublimation paper, which all of this is in the description in the Amazon storefront from the link in the description below. Um, so your sublimation ink as well is listed in uh, the Amazon storefront. So you can get ink for your sublimation printer. So you need your paper, your printer, your ink. Um, you will need blowout paper or butcher paper or regular copy paper, which I think is more of a waste than if you were to do like butcher paper. But regular copy paper, at least, is already pre-cut in certain sizes. So you can get like a large size pre-cut paper. But if you go to U-Haul, they have cut sheets that are actually really, really big that are used for packing. And you can use that for blowout paper as well. And blowout paper is what you put on top of your sublimation, under and above your sublimation project to help keep the ink from spreading beyond where you want it to go. Because sublimation is the process of turning a solid into a gas. And if you're going from you know, that ink that's there on that paper and it turns into a gas once it heats up to 400-ish degrees, it's a gas. So it's going to go beyond where you want it to go. Uh, so you want to keep that controlled and that's what the blowout paper um, is uh, about. So I don't need to concern myself with the sublimation ICC. Uh, sublimation ICC, are you talking about the color, uh, color profiles? I'm starting to get somewhat familiar with color profiles and stuff. This is like I'm learning stuff I never intended to learn so that I can do this direct to film. And it's crazy because the colors, oh, I see what she's saying. She's asking about it being dull until you press it. Okay, that makes more sense now. Uh, spent two weeks trying to learn how to do install the sublimation ICC for me to use in Silhouette Design Studio. Um, honestly, Marley, there you you can do the ICC. Okay, this is what I found works better for me with the sublimation um, is I use whatever, how can I explain this? The program, the program that I use, but see, I also use Photoshop for the silhouette. If you can switch colors in silhouette, like for instance, um, in Photoshop, you can use the eyedropper tool to find a specific color and then flood an area of a design with the color that you want to swap and you can swap colors if silhouette will let you do that then you can just you know press out a color graph like this and then you can use this to pick the color that you want so that you know it'll come out to the color that your program with that printer is going to print out it did that make sense I hope that made sense. I'm trying to think of another way to put it to where it would make more sense. But this, you know, like for instance, with certain uh, vinyl colors, certain brands have different colors in their vinyl and that's the colors that they have. Well, if you stick with that brand, you know the colors that you're going to get. So if you stick with your software and you print out a color chart, you know what these colors are going to look like because they're going to print out the same time every time. So you can pick the color on here that's closest to what your customer wants, and then you can use that to sublimate um, and make sure that the customer's color turns out close to what you need it to. You know what I'm saying? It's not exact. And I'm going to show you something else really cool that I found. Um, you can do that in silhouette as well. Thank you for letting me know that, Gail. So let me show you this really cool. I don't have it in the description, and I need to put it in the description so that you can find it. Uh, because it's in the description of the video that I posted earlier today, but it's not in this description. I found this cool thing. It's called a nick. All right. This is called a nick. And it's the neatest little doohickey thing I have found so far. Because what I was having trouble with is um, matching the color to my customer's orange. And I have it way over there. I don't want to go way over there to get it, but I'm going to use this vinyl as an example because I do have to do, um, I do have an order of 200 masks and this is the color of their logo and I have to use this color. 
Well, as I told you guys, I'm trying to switch from vinyl to direct to film. Okay. So this is vinyl. I don't want to do vinyl, but I need this color on the mask. Okay. So this is the uh, how the NYX works. And I got it off of Amazon. So with the NYX, you, you have to use either a tablet or a smartphone. And you download the uh, app. And the app tells you to connect to the little dongle thingy, right? So I'm going to say connect to it. And it connects by Bluetooth. So your Bluetooth has to be on, which is really, yep, Bluetooth is on. So now it's connected to it, right? All right, so it's connected to this little thingy. And now that it's connected, I can scan a color with this. I can scan an object. And this will tell me what the color is and the little reading thingies for the color. And I know that sounds crazy because I'm not a graphic artist, but I'm going to show you what I mean uh, because the RIP software to my director film was asking for colors, I think it was LAD or something like that. I can't remember. I was like, I've never heard of, I've heard of hex colors, you know, the hex numbers to match a color, but I had never heard of the LA, whatever it was. What? I can find it on here. So let's show you how this works. And I'm hoping I can do this with one hand. So this has a little light built into it. So I'm going to use this and lay it on the surface of this blue. All right, hopefully I won't mess it up. So this is the where the word is, is the back, and the little camera is on the inside. Hopefully my finger isn't covering that. So you lay it on the color, right? So as you see, it's flush on the color, and then it says scan. So we're going to touch scan, and what it's going to do is read this color and pop up the color and tell me what the little reading thingies is for <laughs> I know I'm saying reading thingies, but I'm just saying that to me was like the coolest thing ever, you know, because I need to match this color exactly. So this gives me the hex. It gives me the sRGB, the CMYK, the CIELAV. I never heard of LCA, LRV, and the hue. I didn't know what all this mess was, but all the different software programs have these different little thingies so that you can match your color exactly. This was really cool. This was really cool. I probably will not be using this on a daily basis. <laughs> okay? Probably not. But to me, it was worth it so that my customer will have peace of mind that when I print this out on my DTF, my uh, direct-to-film printer, the color will be what I need it to be, and it will match the vinyl. Right? That's the plan. So I thought this was really cool. Um, I'll find the link here and put it in the description and link it in the um, chat so that you can uh, go grab it. But yes, that thing, I love it. This was really cool. I just got it um, Saturday and been playing with it. I don't. I even know now the hex color for the Bojangles <laughs> chicken box. <laughs> so now I know what color to use for that, right? So at any rate, it's really neat, and um, so I intend to use it to match um, a lot of the, you know, different things. Like my daughter just got a, um, my daughter just got a luggage set. She's planning to go to uh, out west, and I was thinking about going with her. I don't know that I will or not, um, but I, there's the link in the chat box for the Nick, uh, but I was starting to think about going with her, but her luggage set is like a really close color to this, actually. Not quite that color, but more like this side. And I matched the color to her luggage. So I was like, oh, girl, I can match you and make you a design <laughs> for a shirt with that color. It was hilarious. So I don't know. We'll see um, what else I can use this next for. I'm super excited about it because I thought it was just the coolest thing ever. And I'm going to go ahead and drop in the description the link for the Nick, and that way you can uh, grab it after just in case you can't see the chat. So that's in the description now, uh, but it's really cool. So when you're doing, thank you, Galena. Yeah, it is. It is really cool. Um, Gail, this was 99, I think, dollars is what I paid for it in, in my opinion, because 
my customers, these two in particular, especially this one, especially this one, the logo had to be spot on. And I was like, wow, okay. And just so happens the vinyl was spot on. So that worked out perfect. But yeah, the color has to be just so. Otherwise, it's a no-go. But at any rate, so in instances like that where you have to be specific, it's worth it. Um, just like with the Peggy Stitch Eraser, it was worth it. Um, but it's an investment and it's an investment in our businesses. So um, sometimes, yeah, it can be pretty pricey. But I have the mini, the NYX mini, because some of them can be very expensive. I saw one was like 300 bucks, but I don't need it for all of that. I'm not into graphic design and designing clothing and the color has to be just so with all of that or interior designer and stuff. I'm paint. Oh, gosh, I don't need it for paint. I don't need it for none of that. I just need it to match the color so that when I print it out over there, it's going to be what my customer wants, and it's going to be what the computer is telling my printer to print out as far as mixing colors. Because for the most part, colors all across the board, red, the blue, the red, the yellow, and the black, it's common that they're all set colors, but then... Certain mixes, just like at the Lowe's paint counter, they know two squirts of this, one squirt of that. It's going to come out with that color. Same principle here, two squirts of that and whatever squirts of this is what's going to make the color that I need over there on that printer. It should. It should. So at any rate, good night, Laverne Miller. Um, so when it comes to sublimation, you got your printer, you got your paper, you got your ink, you have your um, blowout paper. Um, so that's your basics you will need some form of software you can check out uh, GIMP is free if you don't want to use GIMP some people use Silhouette as was mentioned earlier some people have even used their Cricut to print out a design so that they could print and cut so in a lot of instances yes you can use the Cricut um what else as far as software is concerned I've used Publisher it just depends on what you have accessible to you pins um, Gail, pins for what? Good night, Patty Shelton. Thank you. I appreciate that. Hey, Contessa Harris, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for being a YouTube group member. I appreciate it. Um, so yes, when you get into sublimation, um, there's a host of a lot of other things that you probably could get, but honestly, you don't absolutely need it. Um, uh, but software, your heat press. Your printer, you definitely need a heat press of some sort. You don't have to have a heat press. You can use a Cricut Easy Press, but a heat press does make things much simpler. Um, but if an Easy Press is all you have room for or all you have budget for, that's fine. That is perfectly fine because you can sublimate with the Easy Press. Okay. Um, so that's that. Now, getting into rhinestones, and I really need to mention this one because of the person who contacted me earlier today. With rhinestone, um, if you're trying to get into doing rhinestones, you have a couple of options. Um, there's rhinestones that you would do to bling something. Like, uh, for instance, y'all gonna fuss at me when I show you this. I know, but y'all, it's just, I done been doing so much until it's crazy. And I need to do better and finish this. But when you bling stuff like this ball, Volleyball, I intend to bling the entire thing, pray for me. And I have, you know, been putting it off, putting it off, but I've done quite a bit. It's a lot more because earlier it was just this strip up here, but I've done quite a bit on it, um, but I haven't touched it in about a month and I really need to finish it. But you can do this type of bling where you hand place stones, like on tumblers, on stuff like this, baby pacifiers, baby shoes. I've seen people bling, uh, stuff like that. This is different. This is just called um, flat back rhinestones. And for this, you just need the flat back stones, which you can get from becreateful.com. And the link is in the description below. Um, but you can get that from becreateful.com. You need the stones. You need the glue, which she sells. And I use super tight. Um, and then the stones, the glue, and a pen to help you place uh, not an ink pen, but a bling pen. And she sells that on her site too to help you place stones and determination and time. Plenty of time. 
and a lot of determination to get it done. Because if you see, if you don't have the determination to get it done, you ain't going to get it done. I've been working on this for three months now. Not working on it for three months now, I should say. So at any rate, that's that type bling. That's a little bit different. If you want to do shirts, well, there's a lot more that you have to get. You get your cutting machine, which it can be Cricut. It can be the scan and cut. It can be the silhouette. You need uh, software, which the machines come with it. Um, and then you will need uh, your rhinestone flock to cut out your templates with. Okay, You will go out and you want to buy templates that are out there. You got a couple of different companies out there. My favorite is myfileaddiction.com. Um, so you can go there. I didn't spell it right. C-I-O-N.com. So myfileaddiction.com. I mainly use SS10. SS10 is my go-to. It's my favorite. Not when I'm talking about uh, flat back. Not flat back. Because if I did SS10s on this ball, it would take me forever to cover this ball. So I think I'm using 16s on the ball and 20s. Um, but, and tends to fill in certain spaces, but on fill-in stuff, you want a bigger stone. But on shirts, SS10, um, mainly, or SS6, which is much smaller, is primarily what I use. So you want to use your rhinestone flock. You want your, um, transfer tape because you need to pick up the stone. Um, and you want a brush of some sort, a rhinestone brush to brush the stuff in. And usually it's a paint pad from the store, uh, Walmart or Lowe's. And then once you have those things in your designs and you cut them out and you brush them in and your heat press, that's pretty much your basics and your stones. You want some hot thick stone. So all of that is in uh, on BeCreateful.com. New video on how to bling your t-shirt. I can look into doing that. That's not an issue at all, um, especially being that there's been some changes made, unfortunately, to um, Cricut and how they've been bringing in designs and stuff so let's show you a for instance let's go to let's go here first and let me switch the camera over so that you guys can see uh the website so this is becreateful.com and this is where i get my rhinestone supplies from okay so if you go here to supplies um, I think that's it. Or is it kit? Sorry, you go to kit. If you go here to kit, there's a hot fix starter kit and there's a flat back starter kit. Both of these will give you what you need to get started aside from your cutting machine and your heat press. Okay, so let's click on the hot fix starter kit and show you what that consists of. Um, so it comes with your stones. Let's switch to this one comes with your stones. She brings uh, some stones in. This is your transfer tape. The white is your transfer tape, clear tape. And then the, the pink is the flop. Okay, so you'll need that rhinestone flop to cut out. Some people use, uh, not construction paper, cardstock, or they'll use poster board. I have not had good success with that. You can give it a shot. Some people can use it and it works for them. It did not work for me to each his own. There's nothing wrong with that. But you definitely need something to cut the holes in so that you can brush the stones into the holes that they belong to. And this is what she's using to sell with the kit as a rhinestone brush. Uh, the brush, you, like I said, you can get one of these from Walmart. You can get it from Lowe's. But if you get the starter kit, it comes with it. Um, and I actually use a bigger version of that, which is this right here. Uh, the paint pad, I prefer a bigger grip. So I use this to brush my stones in. This, again, Walmart is where I got this from, and I think it was like two bucks or something like that. Um, you can get a pen. Let's see. Here's what a rhinestone pen looks like on her website. So I have one here, but just so that you could see it, you know, even in more detail, here is the pen. This fat end that looks like an eraser is wax. Okay, and you can break the wax, so you have to be careful with it. But this little tip, if you touch, just barely touch the top of those rhinestones, it will pick up the rhinestone and you can put it in place. You can use this for hot fix to help make sure all of the holes are filled in, or you can use it for your flat back to place 
stones on the glue on whatever it is that you're blinging. Okay, so this is an option. You don't have to have it, um, but definitely something that would be helpful. But aside from that, when you're doing hot fix, that's about it. It doesn't take a whole lot. Um, but you definitely want to check out her rhinestones. Um, she has different types. She has the Korean low lead hot fix rhinestones. That's like your, uh, you know, bargain basement stones. They're still pretty. They will still bling. Um, but your DMC, which is called double machine cut. DMC, double machine cut hot fix stones. These have a little more, you know how, like for instance, look at this picture here of these rhinestones. And you see how they have these flat surfaces all around the stone. There's flat on top. And then there's flat here, flat here, like octagon almost like. Well, each one of these flat surfaces catches the light and reflects it back. So that's just how shiny a stone is. The less amount of those surfaces you have on a stone, the less it's going to sparkle, right? It's like a disco ball. You don't see a disco ball with four panels on it. Your disco ball has hundreds of those little teeny mirrors on it to reflect that light and make the pretty disco look, right? Okay, same principle with the rhinestone. So the less facets you have, the less it's going to blink. So the Korean have the least amount of facets on it than any of the other stones. The double machine cut have more, okay? So the DMC have more, uh, as it says here, the, I'm sorry, Diamante, but I've heard double machine cut. Rhinestones have 12 to 14 facets. It gives high quality sparkle without the high end price, okay? So the DMC stones have 12 to 14 facets and they are beautiful. They do reflect. So if you had the, the option to purchase hot fix stone, notice like right here, the aquamarine. Well, no, that's AMB. Let's find a citrine. Citrine is a yellow. So their citrine is $4.94 per 10 gross. When you buy rhinestones, it's by 10 gross. And that's not a whole lot of stones. It's, it's just not. You, like you could do one rhinestone design in some instances. Um, is usually about a thousand stones in that one pack of stones. Okay, so ten uh, stones starting at four dollars, and then, let me make sure that that's SS ten. SS ten stones, yes. So for a uh, ten gross, it's going to be four dollars and ninety four cents, right? So let's go back to Korean and five cent stream, which is right here. SS ten is four dollars and twenty cents so for the few cents extra i would go with the dmc stones so that you get more sparkle instead of doing the korean stones and saving those few cents per bag okay that's just a suggestion but if you really want to wow your customers with the bling i mean strong wow factor i would go with her lux stones the Lux stones have 16 facets and they sparkle like nobody's business. I mean, these stones, her Lux stones are about on the, I mean, like uh, Swarovski crystals are here. Her Lux is like here, okay? Swarovski is like top of the line. You have to be specially special in order to be a seller of Swarovski stones. So, Lux is about as close as you're going to get to it. And her stones are beautiful, y'all. Oh, my God. I used to have, when I would do bling parties, I would have a man, two mannequins. One would have the regular Korean stones, and the other would have those Lux stones on it. And, folks, you could immediately tell the difference between the two. And my customers would be like, ooh, that really is pretty. Those are the stones that I'm letting y'all use so that you know this isn't just some El Tipo party where we just throw in some stones. Now, these are good quality stones and your stuff is going to look good for a very long time. And so far, I haven't had any complaints out of those stones. So yes, Lux is top of the line. Um, as you see, the price is big difference. So the Citrine here is $9.89 for an SS10 uh, 10 gross bag. It's worth it if you're trying to really impress your customers. Okay. So keep that in mind. 
that is uh, rhinestones and what you can use to start out with. And in case you were wondering, um, I posted in the uh, chat and in the description about my file addiction, you will also need designs, okay? So this is my file addiction. I used her uh, not exclusively, but a whole heck of a lot because her designs are absolutely wonderful. She also takes the time to create designs that work really well with the Cricut, okay? So that you don't have to do a whole bunch of mess with the Cricut machine because Cricut is special. We're not going to go into that. But she also has free designs that you can try, okay? So here are her free designs. And if you wanted to just give it a shot, just download these, put it in your Cricut, cut it out, and you can practice doing bling without, you know, blowing your budget. But her designs are beautiful. Um, and most of her designs are SS10 to SS6 designs. Um, and it will tell you. So let's take a look like over here. We'll go into um, a little bougie. I can be a little bougie, just a little bit. I can be a little bougie. And notice this design because this is what you're going to also want to get into when you're doing hot fix is finding designs that you like. And here we have, look at her design. It tells you how big the design is, the final design. And it tells you the stones that you would need to have to do this design exactly as you see it here on the screen. So if you want purple lips, that's fine. But you will have to have 321 size SS10 purple stones instead of red stones, okay? You see what I'm saying? See how she does that. So your clear stones, 1,005. Remember, 10 gross is 1,440 stones. So if you do this design with 10 out of your 10 gross crystal bag, you'll only have 400 stones left. And that's not enough to do another one of these designs, you see? So that's how you can calculate and know how many stones you need to buy and start out with. Okay, so here is how you would read, uh, and it also tells you the total amount of stones. So if you did all of this in all the same color, um, then the total would be 1,326 stones. If you split it up, as you see here, red is 321, and again, the clear is 1,005. Okay, so that's how you do it. You download the design, cut it out in the flop, brush the stones in, pick them up, and there you are. All right, and as you see, she has a variety of really awesome designs. So you would want to take the time and scroll through. And she even has a discount going on right now that's going to end tonight. It's going to end tonight. So if you want some designs at a really good deal, right now is the time to go get them because it's going to end tonight, uh, midnight Pacific Standard Time. Okay. So there you are for Rhinestone doing hot fix. Um, so that you can get a shirt, yeah, the 50% in today, I know, right? So, and even still, they're still fairly affordable designs, usually about six bucks for design or something like that. So, you know, just keep that in mind. But SS10 is my favorite. Uh, Dorothy says, I did a Michael Jackson t shirt with SS10 Hot Fix, it came out beautiful. Stones, I love stones, I still love my rhinestones. So definitely, uh, if you're wanting to get in it, this is how um, you would do it, okay? Um, oh, Gail McNair, sublimation pins. Yes, sublimation pins are cool. Y'all, OMG, hold on. I'm going to show you something cute that I found because I do have sublimation pins, right? Let me show you all this. Where is it at? I just could not believe this. I had, you know, I don't particularly care to get up and get away from the computer when I'm on camera because, you know, I don't want y'all see my fat rump as I'm walking away. But look what I found at Dollar Tree. Look at there. For a dollar, you get paint pens. It says water brush pens, but sublimation ink is thin enough to put in these pens. These are at Dollar Tree. You get two of them for a book, y'all, and you can. Uh, let the babies, you know, your grandbabies or whatever, you can put the sublimation ink in there and then fill it up and let them paint. Why wow, I can't get this off. Let them paint with the pen and then you can sublimate, put the sublimation paper down, let them paint 
or you can paint. If you love to paint, paint on the sublimation paper and you can, you know, uh, use it to sublimate. Y'all, it's, I was like, whoa, go ahead on Dollar Tree, even though right now I can't even take the pen apart. But I mean, it is Dollar Tree after all. So you can make your own sublimation pens technically if you can get the lid off. I mean, the, the barrel apart. Let's see if this one comes apart. Y'all, it look like it's going to be the struggle to take this apart. Hold on. Am I twisting the right thing? Yeah, I am. All right, so this doesn't look that good for sublimation right now, but we'll figure this out later. I haven't tried to take it apart yet, so keep that in mind. Dang it. Oh, was I twisting the wrong way? I was twisting the wrong way, y'all. I was trying to tear it up. So that was my bad. Sorry, Dollar Tree. I love you. So yeah, you can put the ink in and then twist it back on. Why is it reversed? It's supposed to be right to tight. Left to loose. That's backwards. It's not left to loose. It's right to loose. That's crazy. But anyway, whatever. So you can make your own paint pens at uh, Dollar Tree. I thought that was like, go head on. They are coming out with all kind of crazy stuff. So yeah, their craft section is really blowing up. So yes, you can make sublimation pens if you want to. Want to. So yeah, definitely that. That bottle doll is going to be too cute. Marty says it is. I just got to finish the darn thing. Um, oh, so at any rate, somebody did mention uh, bling decals, okay? So if you're wanting to do rhinestone decals for a car, then you will want to get a hold to um, a product called bling anything. So you'll need that as well. So you can, your, your hot fix, instead of pressing to a shirt, you'll press to the bling anything material. And that is what you can use to put on a car. And from what I understand, it. Um, lasts a really long time and that you can purchase from um, the rhinestone world but all your other stuff your rhinestones your flock and all that cool stuff i would definitely say be grateful because their uh flock is perfect the stones are beautiful perfect price yeah definitely check them out um now as far as making your own rhinestone designs can't help you with that <laughs> sorry I don't have the patience to make them, and it, it's like placing stone by stone unless you get the software to help you, but the software never does the rhinestone per placement perfect. More drama than I feel like it's worth, so I don't know what much to tell you about that. Anisha asked about my business name. My business name I got because... um. How old is my daughter? My daughter will be 22. So 21, I don't even think she was a year old. Uh, years ago, she, um, I took a picture of her standing there looking out the window. I don't even know what she was looking at, little nosy thing. And she had on her little onesie and her little chocolate legs sticking out from under the onesie. It was just totally adorable. So I said from there, I was going to name a company, The Baby's Booty. Um, Never could figure out when or what company I was going to do that would fit that. And what ended up happening is I started out with doing the embroidery. And then starting out doing the embroidery, I was making baby gifts. So it, and then I found the little pirate duck um, that I thought was just absolutely adorable. And his little patch over his eye. Um, you know, he was a pirate, so the pirate's booty and, you know, in her picture. So I just came up with the baby's booty and that's pretty much how that name came about. So yes, and I'm trying to find the picture because I have it on my Instagram and so far I have not come across it yet, but it is on my Instagram to show how I came up with that because the picture is so adorable. It's still, it is one of my favorite pictures of her. It really is because it's just the cutest thing ever. But that's how I came up with my business name. It's just, it fit. And um, I started it 90, no, I started it 17, 2017. And that is how I came up with it. I cannot find that picture, y'all. I'm still scrolling. This is the same. I post um, on Instagram and need to keep up with myself. 
because I switched computers, so I don't have that picture. I don't think one of those computers is going to die. Mm-mm. I haven't found it yet. Probably won't find it. But I'll show you something else that's crazy. Here I am sitting here, 45 years old. Look, look at that. Do I look the same? I was in third grade in that picture. Isn't that crazy? As my friend says, it was when I was young, sweet, and innocent. Yeah, that's long gone. Listen, Evie. Uh, let's see. It should be right in here, that picture. But at any rate, I'm wasting time. I know y'all got to get off of here. Oh, here it is. See, that's the picture. 1999, the cutest little chunky baby legs and the pampered booty in a onesie. That's the baby booty. And that picture, I promise y'all, as soon as I took that picture and saw it, I was like, oh my God, look at her little booty. And I was like, okay, the baby's booty. I was going to make the company with that name. I said that back then. I said that back then with this picture. And the uh, first opportunity I got to name my business that, that's what I did. I've had several businesses through the years that I didn't stick with. But this one with the embroidery, I said I was going to stick with it. And this is how I came up with my business name. And then, of course, you have Sir McQuacken, um, who just mainly actually sealed the deal with the name of the business um, because, you know, definitely it fit for him. And uh, Sir McQuacken is, um, he's a pirate duck. So the pirate's booty, the baby's booty. And it just all came together. It, it's amazing. It all came together at one time because I found him around about the time I started my business. So, yeah, that's how it started. The baby's booty. I appreciate you asking. I get the question every so often because some folks be like, why well, damn? It wasn't anything crazy. It was just my baby and he was super cute. Um, let's see. Thank you, Miss 143. I appreciate you. <laughs> so where do I buy designs from are you talking about rhinestones if you're talking about rhinestones most instances I get them from my file addiction most instances there are a few designs I've gotten off of Etsy um, and then there are some designs I've gotten off of um, oh gosh it's my uh, crystal glam is another one uh, but mostly my file addiction and my file addiction usually is who, oh, and Rhinestone Mechanic is another one. Rhinestone Mechanic, uh, I get a lot from him too. But between those two, My File Addiction and Rhinestone Mechanic, if there's a design my customer comes up with and they want a design made, or if I have my own idea of a design, I'll send it to them and because they have a thing on their website where you can order and ask them to make a design for you. So even if you don't know how to make it, you could actually have some commission them to make the design for you. So um, thank you, Dorothy. The Rhinestone World also has videos on how to use that bling anything to make rhinestone decals. So yes, definitely check that out. Uh, oh, she said, my, not my Dollar Tree head, Jose, so lame. Uh, let's see. So at any rate, um. Pictures I can't see without my glasses. I saw we. Um, nice story. My mother taught me, so that's where my name came from. EJ's daughter, honor her always. That's awesome. So, yay. Yeah, I still had those beautiful teeth. Oh, thank you. God, I know, right? That face. So, at any rate, um, the only other thing I would get into, aside from rhinestones, we talked about rhinestones, we talked about sublimation, we talked about embroidery, would be direct to film. And as I've shown you guys before, I have a link in the description, if I'm not mistaken, for where to go buy the direct-to-film setup that I purchased. But he has a starter kit as well. And it comes with the printer. It comes with the ink. It comes with the, the film that you need. It also comes with the cleaning supplies that you need to keep the machine maintained. Um, and aside from that, you just need a software program, that a RIP software program, because you will need to RIP the design uh, that's a that's a graphic uh, term that I'm learning. 
um, to rip the design to your printer so that the printer will know exactly precisely what it needs to print and spool it and all that other jazz. So a lot more technical description I'm sure is out there that I don't know because I'm just getting into this. But that's pretty much it. Um, each one of our vices, so to speak, each one of our crafts, individual crafts, is something that will take a considerable amount of investment. Okay, you're not going to be able to get into um, now some of the sublimation. You probably can get started by just buying a Cricut, but even the Cricut is over a hundred dollars. So there's investment there. Okay, about the least expensive thing I can think of would be uh, like the mug press. No, the mug press is over $100. So, you know, it, it's going to take some considerable investment. Keep that in mind. And it's not going to grow up and blow up overnight. There are those very few and far in between situations where you just like overnight success. But it, it, it means more when there's hard work, determination, and patience. Okay, patience. So perfect your craft as time goes along. No matter which option you go with, you can make a business out of all of it. But as long as you have the basics and a great group behind you to help encourage you and help answer questions along the way, you can make it. And that's what we here at the Baby's Booty is for on Facebook, um, even here on our lives on Sundays. We can help you along your journey to get better okay so price range you're looking at for direct to film three thousand dollars roughly um 25 and 2000 and 2500 for the machine um and the supplies to come with it actually you can you can you could probably go 22 2300 with shipping to three thousand okay but most of the supplies are way cheaper now. I'm I'm marking up because I bought extra supplies, so way cheaper than uh, uh, white toner printing. Very much cheaper. The eye color way cheaper than that whole setup, and the ink is ridiculous with the white toner. Whereas here you can get ink very inexpensive, and all of that is listed on the Kingdom BTF website. His prices are there; they're clear. No gimmicks, no nothing. Um, so definitely check them out at kingdombtf.com. You're welcome for the help, EJ's daughter. You're welcome. So you guys, I appreciate. Uh, no, no, no. You're fine, Galena. That's no worries at all. Um, you guys, I appreciate uh, your coming in with us tonight. I don't have prices for embroidering t-shirts initially because I actually have gotten out of doing embroidery uh, for hire, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, I have certain customers that I've always had and I intend to keep them. But as far as bringing in new business, I'm not doing that at the moment. Um, I've actually had more fun teaching and that's pretty much the route that I intend to go with this um, from now on. But uh, I don't have information on prices for embroidering t-shirts um but yes hopefully that answers your question what is the difference in getting the direct to film from this salesman at amazon um amazon in most instances you have to wait for it to come overseas so you're looking at about two to three weeks um but it's a chance um that you take you do get a guarantee as far as you know you shouldn't get hoodooed out of your money but this guy didn't hoodoo me out of my money so you know i don't see him doing that but amazon i i don't know i didn't buy from amazon but i don't see where it would be that bad of a problem other than customer service you probably won't get very much um assistance whereas this guy give gave his cell phone number to text him if he had questions or he has a facebook group which i prefer to use because i know how that can be um, and he does definitely help as well as other people in the group help. Whereas on Amazon, I don't know that you would have that type of support. You might, but there's no guarantee on that. So, um, but that's what I would suggest. But I did consider doing Amazon. I did consider buying from Amazon, but the turnaround time 
from the time I placed the order to getting the equipment was far too long, in my opinion. Is direct to film called DTF? Yes. Yes, that is correct. So DTG is direct to garment. So in direct to garment, you're putting the actual shirt in the printer and it prints directly to the shirt that you've had to pre-treat. But with this process, you're printing on the film itself. And then once you print on the film, you have to apply the glue. Once you apply the glue and you cure it, and then you can press it to a shirt, a hat, um, leather, wood. I mean, you can apply it to so many things, just about um, fabric-wise especially. Okay. So, you guys, thank you for joining me this evening. It was totally awesome. I uh, Hopefully, it was helpful. Um, a lot of information on a lot of different crafts there that we discussed tonight um, and shows you guys the little nicks, which I thought was super cute. Like I said, I put the link in the description if you're interested in getting one. Um, it, it did prove quite helpful. Uh, but aside from that, you're always welcome to post your questions in the Hoop group on Facebook. And we will definitely um, get into answering more questions more regularly on Facebook. As far as myself, I've been like, really, really busy, so I haven't been able to get onto Facebook too terribly much. Uh, Felicia asked, do I like Facebook better than Subly? Easy Subly, yes. And the reason why I like it better than Easy Subly is because in most instances with Easy Subly, you have to, like if I wanted to do Sir McQuackens, I could print Sir McQuackens on Easy Subly and then cut out with my um, print and cut on the Cricut cut out around him kiss cut and peel it, weed it, and then press it right so that i don't have that white square but with this i don't have to do any of that i don't weed anything i just print what needs to be pressed and all colors it prints i can press it on any cotton polyester no matter the color i don't have to cut anything i don't have to weed anything love it love it time saver um you know keeps me from wasting material because with the easy subtly i mean you kind of waste a little bit of the film Easy Subly ain't cheap. It is not cheap. So with this, it's just the film. And then once I apply and peel it off, you know, throw that away, I don't have to worry about the parts of the Easy Subly that I, I wasn't able to print on and had to throw away and waste. So in my opinion, I do definitely love it better than anything I have to weed. And that's the truth. <laughs> I don't like the weed. So you guys have a good night. You're welcome, Marley Marley. Thank you all so, so, so very much for joining us this evening. It's always a pleasure, always fun. And I look forward to us starting back into our project next week. I hope to get online with you guys in Facebook and do a live demonstration of using the um, printer uh, since I've done the follow-up and also talked a little bit more about it tonight. But we'll actually work on a project in this, probably on our Facebook Live at some point this week. Um, so that you can see it because I do need to print with this thing on a daily basis. So it's going to get used. All right. So thank y'all. Have a good night. And I look forward to seeing you all next week here, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So hope you guys have a great night. Look forward to seeing your project. Congratulations again to those who got new babies. And please show off your project in the Who Group on Facebook. All right. Thanks. Have a good night, y'all. Bye.